Welcome, welcome to Shore Community Church. Great to see everyone here today. Hello to everyone online. Oh, we're going to start our service very soon. So on this cold morning, it's a bit chilly, but it's good. But it's good. At least the sun's shining as well, so it's a good thing. So if you want to join me uh, and stand if you can. If not, that's absolutely fine. Stay where you are. But uh, if you're able to, do please stand. And let's just enter into the presence of God this morning. We serve an amazing, great God, don't we? We do. And he's the everlasting God. You know, we need to put our, our focus on the Lord at all times. We can get strength from him. We get peace from him. We get love from him. All we need to do is just connect and just put our eyes on him. So yeah, let's just sing about his love. Let's sing about how strong he is, how faithful he is. Let's just connect with the Lord this morning. We worship you, Lord. For us, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength for us, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong belief. Yes, 
Cheers, guys. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Shore Community Church. I'm Nick. I'm one of the ministers here, and it's great to have all of you guys here and you folks online as well. Uh, we've got quite a bit to get through this morning, um, but we'll, we'll race through them, um, and there's going to be some valuable things for us to, to hear from others as well. Um, so first things first, um, you'll have seen in the email, if you get the email sent round, um, and might have noticed today as well that we are now encouraging people um, more so to wear masks uh, if possible, please. So to be wearing masks um, throughout this space um, and when we're, when we're worshipping together, when we're talking together. You can maybe take them off when you have a coffee, I mean... I suppose. Um, but yes, otherwise, we would just really appreciate that. Obviously, we're, we're aware of uh, the news with increased uh, mask wearing in, in shops as well. And we feel that in, in the current climate that it's appropriate um, to do so, if, if possible, please. Uh, Christmas. It is... Hey, it's, it's not December yet. It's not December yet. But it is the first Sunday of Advent. Um, so we're going to be sharing, or Joe is going to be sharing a little bit about that in a moment. Um, but yes, Christmas events. We've got lots of Christmas events happening over the course of December. Far too many for me to share right now. Um, but there are little flyers out in the foyer. Hopefully you've had the details in the email as well. So lots of different things. Please do grab a flyer, um, share it with a friend. Uh, because there's lots of different things, and it would be great to have as many people involved in those events as we celebrate the incarnation, the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, so, yeah, please do grab those flyers. You can ask us for more if, if you're wanting to share those with other folk as well. And continuing with the theme of Christmas. So on Christmas Day, we will have a service here, um, but after the service, there's going to be a Christmas dinner taking place, um, and that's going to be for those who... Um, would just really appreciate having a dinner with others who might, might otherwise be um, on their own at Christmas um, and would enjoy to share that with others. So we're going to be hosting a Christmas dinner here. Um, lots happening behind the scenes for that. Um, but we've been asked if anyone has uh, baking trays. Um, so about A4 size, if anyone has a baking tray that they're able to donate to the church for the Christmas dinner, um, that would be wonderful. Uh, please mark your name on it in some way or maybe take a photo so you can recognize your burnt stains on your baking tray compared to other people's. Um, so if you're able to do that, please um, let me or Carla know or Joe Murphy who's organizing the Christmas dinner. Uh, also, we've been running the sanctuary course. Julie has been heading up the sanctuary course over the past six weeks, I think, um, and that is really focused on supporting people in their mental health journeys, their, um, their well-being. Um, and there is a final session of this course that is all centered around COVID, uh, and actually it, it's a standalone session. So what, what we're encouraging folk to do is, even if you haven't come to, to any of the, uh, the sanctuary course sessions previously, you can book in uh, to come along to the COVID session. And that is uh, just really focused on how to explore um, the, the emotional and social um, vulnerabilities kind of in, in light of the pandemic um, and to kind of reflect on, on the themes within that and how we can be better supporting people, um, but also just for a space for us to be able to process and to sit with 
um, some of the difficulties of this past season as well. So you don't have to attend it, like I said before, um, but please do uh, let us know if you're interested in that. Uh, it would help if I told you the date, wouldn't it? So that is Monday the 6th of December, so that's next Monday, not the one coming, the one after, uh, and that's at 7.30 uh, p.m. So please do um, book in for that if you'd like to come along. Uh, I'm just going to invite John and Hannah up to share uh, the final part of the notices. Morning, everybody here, everyone at home and mother. <laughs> if you've managed to make it off the beach on time. Well, um, that was absolutely excellent. Uh, it's difficult to follow that. It was really good, Joe and kids. Thank you for that. We, Hannah and I, are here. We are members of the FAB team, the finance and business team. And we look after the stewardship of the money for the church and try to think of interesting and novel ways of making more money. So um, here's a couple of things we're talking about. Um, now, first thing to say is thank you so much for your faithful giving. Uh, as we've often said, we could not survive without the faithful and sacrificial giving of the people who keep this church going. And it, it's, it's you, it's the people here and the people who are at home. We recognize that with offerings going round, not as frequently as there was, more people uh, being at home, that um, our offerings are going down. And so we look at different ways of being able to support that. Um, we also recognize that um, people who come into our church, which is open six or seven days a week, may not come to this service. So one of the things we've done is we've put on the wall outside a swipe machine. You may have seen this in different churches. So you can just put your card up if you feel so led and it takes a standard amount just for ease of five pounds. So I checked it yesterday with Claire Sargent's card, and it, <laughs> and it works. So just be aware that that's there. The other thing we're doing is text giving. So you can text um, all the details on the website. Um, you, you text something called Sure 5 to a number, and you can give a pound or five pounds. So we're just conscious that people, you know, as we have the offering, uh, um, as we, we will... Um, later, that people can give at home as well as um, obviously in the normal means of giving through standing orders and other things. So do use those, do pass us uh, that message on. Details are on the website, but uh, we just thank you for us being able to continue with the money you give. Here's another initiative from Hannah. Thanks, John. <laughs> so, yeah, following on from that, in order to um, get a bit of extra income into the church and other ways to actually hire out some of the, the rooms that we've got that are not being used. Um, essentially, this room. And obviously, the, most people know it as the extension out the back. Um, as we like to create new names in this church, um, we've, we've re renamed it sort of the studio for the downstairs, the Shaw Studio, and the Sky Lounge above it. Just a bit of clarity. Everyone loves a new name, <laughs> Um, so basically, all the details are on the website. You've probably seen, you've seen it in the notices, possibly. It's on our Facebook page, and there's a booking form as well to fill, fill in. But basically, what, we'd like to, what I'd like to ask is if you could think and pray carefully if, if there's anybody you know that may have a use for any of these rooms, either as a one-off or a regular hire. I mean, it could be an exercise group. Um, it could be you know, a training session at work. Um, those kind of things, or it could be even a bigger scale event. There's all the details on the website, and Carla, as always, is the person that holds all the uh, information on the availability and the bookings. Um, I, I believe a lot of the rooms are quite busy at the moment, but I think there are still some gaps, um, particularly maybe a, a different day, like a Saturday or something. Um, but yeah, I think that is everything, yeah, so if you can think and pray, that would be brilliant. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you, Hannah. Well, uh, we're obviously... Um, the offering baskets are at the back if people want to give, but we just want to thank you again uh, for your faithful giving and how much we as a church and a FAB team appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, John. That's great. We're going to continue to worship now. We'll do one more song and then the kids can go uh, and do their.
their class. So uh, again, if you're able to, do please join me and stand. Uh, and let's just connect with the Lord. He's our Father, a good Father. God is good. God's amazing. He knows everything that we need before we even have to say anything. He knows what's in our hearts. He sees us. He knew before we were created us. You know, He cares for us. He loves us. Let's just sing about His love. And stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're Good, good father, it's who you are, who you are, who you are, and love for you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. and I've seen many searching for. Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say your word. Come on, church. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Yes, Lord. It's who you are, it's who you are, and love by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and love by you. It's who I am. Who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect in all of.
thank you for being our Father, for loving us, for caring for us, for giving us the peace, the strength, the hope. Our oh, love, Lord, in this world and the love that you give us for our eternity, Lord. Lord, you are good and we just thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's send the kids out. Have a great time, kids. Every blessing upon you. We're just going to continue to worship. Do you continue to stand, church. Sit if you want to sit. We're just, uh, we're just going to do one more. We're going to connect and continue to connect with the Lord this morning. Try. 
focus onto you in every situation, Lord, in the good times and in the bad times. Lord, we put our focus onto you, Lord. Not looking at the issues, not looking at the ways, but putting our eyes on you, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, to give you thanks for the strength that you give us as we do walk through our lives, Lord, the strength, the hope, because you are our anchor, Lord. You are our rock. Nothing moves that, Lord. And we can put our foundations out, out and stand on you, Lord. Stand on the rock, firm and, and strong in the knowledge that nothing is, is bigger than you, Lord. You are greater than all things. Lord, you are amazing. We just thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey folks, there came a time when um, the Baptist Union needed to give me a supervisor. When I was training for ministry, I needed a supervisor. And they looked around and they decided, who has been on the naughty list for the longest? And that poor soul got the job of being my supervisor. And that poor soul is with us this morning. Would you please welcome my good friend, Philip Amos. Come up the front, Philip. Philip. Philip is a Baptist minister. He's from, uh, re until recently, minister, until recently, New Life Church in Worthing. And um, he, the naughty stick fell upon you, didn't it, when it came up? Yeah, I, I, I rang up Spurgeon and said, have you got a youth pastor? And they said, no, but we've got a minister that needs straightening out. <laughs> um. Yes, no, no surprise to anyone sitting here. So I've been trying to get uh, Philip to come and share with us for a few years now. And then we had this thing called lockdown COVID. You might have remembered it. It was in the news. And, uh, but finally, eventually, before he disappears off to the uplands of Surrey, isn't it, you're going to? Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire, near enough. My geography was never my strong point. Um, managed to get Philip along to preach this morning. And so would you welcome him one more time and then Philip's going to share with us. <laughs> Please don't clap because you haven't heard me yet. Um, if, I'd if I'd known I was going to be online, I would have plucked my eyebrows and lost two stone. Um, if we could have the first slide, um, that would be grand. Um, hopefully we're keeping sync. I've got to do my professor witty every now and then uh, and say next slide. But that's, that's the one we're up. I don't know whether you've ever been invited to do um, any public speaking or uh, to uh, give a few... Uh, well-chosen words at a social event or anything like that. Many years ago, I was asked to go to a school leavers' assembly and bring a few well-chosen words. And uh, I was also leaving the area at the time, and they crammed a thousand kids into a school hall. Uh, they did all the awards and stuff like that, and then they said, and, and Philip's just going to come with a few well-chosen words. 
so I talked about the fact that I was moving on. We were going from a, a fairly large town to a small village where there was an open-air disco. Well, that's what we called it. It was a set of traffic lights. But that was about the most exciting thing to do uh, in Stockfold uh, at the time. So I said I was going to make the most of it because it was down to me. Uh, I wasn't reliant upon the place, but actually I was taking me with me. I was the one that needed to work really hard. And as they leave school, they need to take themselves with them and and work really hard. And I said, and my uh, well-chosen words that the head has asked me to bring are photosynthesis and Constantinople. And then I sat down. And then suddenly, a thousand kids suddenly went... (laughs) As they got what I did. They are my two most favourite words in the whole world. And and words have so much meaning. I like those because you can just get your teeth into them. Constantinople and photosynthesis. Uh, And I heard the other week that they'd done a survey a couple of years ago of the words that people like to hear the most. And they did a top three. And number one of the words that people like to hear, are their favourite ones are, I love you. The second ones that people like to hear is I forgive you. Anybody want to have a guess at the third most favourite set of words that people like to hear, apart from my wife, who knows the answer? Well done. Well done. That's not right, but well done. Well done for having the courage to say something. The answer actually is, supper's ready. I mean, I don't know how supper has got into the top three. But when I heard the, the results of that day's survey, I thought, you know, that is Advent. Those sets of words are Advent and God's view on it. Let me explain. If we could have the next... Oh, do Professor Whitty, if you could have the next slide, please. I'll do my Boris Johnson. Um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um. In, in the depths of the Bible... There is a brilliant book. It's sometimes a mad book, and it's called The Song of Songs. And it's basically a love poem. And it it gets a little hard to understand, gets a little weird at times, if we're honest, and it gets a little steamy in places. Um, I've tried quoting a few bits to my wife. Uh, It didn't get me anywhere uh, on that one. But in the more normal parts of the book, there's this one verse that says, he brought me to his banquet hall and raised the banner of love over me. And for me, this verse sums up the Christmas story. Because in its basic format, it's God saying, look, I'm going to come and live with you so that we can eat together and you can get to know me better. In other words, supper's ready. Come and dine. Come and spend time with me. So you can get to know what I'm really like. To another person in the Bible, God says this. It's in Psalm 46. It said, step out of the traffic and take a long loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. I I don't know about you, but Christmas can get somewhat busy. Now, I'm only going to do this because I'm actually good this year. But has anybody started their Christmas shopping. Pretty good. Anybody not started? Most married men. So it's not, <laughs> not Christmas Eve yet. Okay. Anybody started their Christmas shopping and finished? Anybody started their Christmas shopping and finished and wrapped all their presents? I put my hand up. My wife's done it all. Okay, I'm just putting my hand up on behalf of her. But Christmas, it gets so busy, doesn't it? There's the Christmas shopping, there's the parties, there's the endless WhatsApps from families, where are we going for Christmas dinner, where are we going for Boxing Day? And then there's the the week of Christmas where you have to go to a supermarket and take three trolleys in and fill it full of food, wine and silly Christmas jumpers. I mean, Christmas gets so busy. And yet God says to us, Step out the traffic. Step outside the busyness and come and take a look at me. A long, loving look at me. In other words, come and have supper. 
Come to my banquet. Come and eat with me. Now, for those of you who like a relaxing drink in the evening of the red variety, this verse literally says, he brought me to his house of wine. Now, personally for me, wine tastes like cough medicine. I can't stand the stuff. But I'm sure for some of you, this verse has got so much better. But God says, look, come, relax. Come and eat, come and drink. Supper's ready. You see, the Christmas story is God's invitation to come and take a closer look at him. In essence, it's the message that the angels brought to the shepherds. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of God because there is good news. And he's inviting you, those that feel on the outside, those of you who are on the hillside, he's saying, come down and take a closer look. Supper's ready. Come and spend some time with me. If we could have the next slide, please. Supper is God's invitation to come today. Come and take a closer look to him. Find out what he's really like to get to know him better. If you were to spend some time with me, you would soon find out that I'm an extrovert. I have two speeds in life, 500 miles an hour and asleep. That's all I deal in, really. And one time... Um, for my sins. I was sent to visit some missionaries at our church that I was in at the time. We were supporting them, uh, and they lived in France. Now, France, they like eating well. And uh, on Sunday, we we went off to church. I never understood a word of it because me and school didn't do very well, so I didn't understand French at all. And they they warbled on. And then we came home, and, and then we ate. And I thought, oh, great food. And dinner lasted three hours. Three hours. Now I'm 500 miles an hour. I'm, and my friends could see me. I'm sitting there like. And they said, well, dinner's over. I thought, oh, thank goodness for that. And they said, we've got some friends coming over for supper. They'll be here any minute. Supper, four hours. I sat still for seven hours. But by the end of it, I knew them really well because supper was ready and we sat down together and I got to know them. We talked. I heard their stories and they heard my stories. I heard their hearts cry and they heard my hearts cry. And that's what God says to us. Supper's ready. Let's spend some time together. Let's hang out together. I've got so many good things that I've got for you that I want to say to you. Take time. Step out of the Christmas traffic. Slow down a bit. Take a long, loving look at God. Maybe you've known God for many, many years. Can I ask you? If the Christmas story of Emmanuel, God with us, if it still thrills your being, then great. But if you've got familiar with the Christmas story, God's saying, supper's ready. Come and spend some time with me afresh. And if you're new to church, if you've never been here before, if you're asking questions about life, then can I say, sit down, grab a plate. God said, supper's ready. He wants to get to know you and all that he has for you in your life. So that's the first thing. If we could have the next slide, then I can work out whether I've got, oh, I'm on track with the slides. Great. I find it interesting that the second most favorite things that people want to hear is, I forgive you. See, the truth is, even if we are in the most perfect of human relationships, at some stage, they are going to let us down. And consequently, we are going to let them down. And I think that's why we love to hear, I forgive you. As Jamie said, I'm moving somewhere. Um, Sorry, Hertfordshire. I'm going just outside of Watford. Uh, And we went to see the house. 
uh, yesterday, my, my wife uh, and I and Ruth, who's, who's with us at the moment, and uh, Rachel always has a banana for breakfast. Don't ask me why, she just does. Nine o'clock, she has a banana. We get in the car, we drive to Bushy, we measure up all the house. We're up, we're downstairs, we're around, we're in the garden, we're back up, down, we're measuring. And then I, then I had to go to church, the, the church I'm going to. I had to answer some questions, meet a few people. And then I said, let's go. And, and, and now that we've measured up, let's go 500 miles an hour. Let's go to all the electrical shops and find a fridge freezer. It was three o'clock in the afternoon. I was excited. I wasn't hungry. My wife had had a banana. Nine o'clock. It's now three o'clock. She says to me, Philip, if you don't give me something to eat now, I might say something unreasonable. <laughs> now, for my wife, that's cross. Okay. <laughs> Polite, but Cross. Okay, so we went straight to Tesco's. Being the romantic that I am, I bought her a meal deal. <laughs> now, if I hadn't brought the meal deal, if I'd carried on and pushed her into curries, within minutes, one of us would have had to say, I forgive you. Because the other one might have said something that we would have later regretted. King David, in the Old Testament, one day he's brought face to face with his wrongdoing. He's been a bit of a naughty lad. I mean, Jamie kind of says that he and I are naughty. I mean, we're not in the league of King David. He'd plotted somebody's murder so he could get rid of her husband because he wanted to marry the wife having an affair. He already had an affair with her. And he's brought face to face with his wrongdoing. And he comes before God and he says this, Create in me, a, oh God, sorry, create, create a pure heart in me, oh God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence or take, me from your, take your Holy Spirit from me. In other words, God, can I have a fresh start? Can I start over again? I've done wrong. Will you forgive me? And that's what the Christmas story is all about. God sends Jesus into the world to say, I forgive you. To show how forgiving, how loving he is, how accepting he is of us. He gave Jesus so that we could have a fresh start. We've all messed up. It might not be of the scale of King David, but we've all done things wrong. In 1 Corinthians 13, there's some verses that tell us that that what God's like. It says this, most of you will know it. It says this, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It's not proud, uh, it doesn't dishonor others. It's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Now, if you stick God where the word love is, then you'll get to know what God's like. He is all of those things for us. And he came into the world in the form of a baby to show us a better and a different way of life. And they say that when you become a Christian, God forgives and forgets all of your, the things that you've done wrong. I don't actually agree with that. God is omnipresent. He knows everything. He doesn't forget anything. Actually, when we become a Christian, God chooses not to hold our wrongdoing against us. He knows we've done wrong, but he says, I forgive you. Let's start over. Let's start afresh. Psalm 103, verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us, our wrongdoing from us. Now, I, get, I, I guess the psalmist didn't have kind of that good a form of, of uh, geography. He probably went to the Jamie School of Geography. But if you travel east, you never get to west. You can go around the world as many times as you like, but you'll never get to west. Whereas if you go north or south, eventually you will be going south or north. And I think that is just so wonderful that the psalmist said, look, I can go east and try and find west, but I'll never find it. And God says, and that's what it's like. It's not that he forgets, he just chooses not to hold those wrongdoings against us. If we could have the next slide, please. We're at the very start of Advent. So why not step out of the traffic, take a long, loving look at God, see what he's done for you. It may be that you need to hear the words, I forgive you, spoken over your life today. It may be that you're overwhelmed by a sense of shame or guilt, and you need to know that you are forgiven. 
that you can, in fact, start over again, have a fresh start. It's not that it makes what you've done disappear, but it means that you start afresh. That you know that you're forgiven and you start to try and restore relationships. You start to put things right. Or it may be at the start of Advent, you need to go and say, I forgive you to someone. Yes, they've wronged you. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it was their fault. But there's so much healing. There's so much release when we go to other people and say, I forgive you. Then the relationship can start to repair. God doesn't want any of us to be living in unforgiveness. It doesn't do us any good. He went to the trouble of sending Jesus to ask to say supper's ready. Come and eat with me, spend time with me, get to know me better. Feel safe and know my forgiveness in your life. Like I said, we may not be in the league of King David, but we've all messed up. We've all done things that are wrong, and it may be that we need forgiveness spoken over us. Christmas story is a story of fresh starts, new beginnings, of healing, of restoration. This Emmanuel, God with us. So maybe you just need to press the pause button. Think about whether you need forgiveness or to extend forgiveness to someone. Why not start on an adventure with God this Christmas? Step on the path of forgiveness and see where God takes you. If we can have the next slide. Oh, I'm still in sync. This is grand. Final, most popular words that people love to hear is, I love you. That verse in the Song of Songs, he's brought me to his banquet hall and raised the banner of love over me. There's two thoughts about the word banner here. One is it was a banner that was used at war. They, were, they didn't have machine guns and tanks and stuff like that. It was all kind of armed combat and stuff like that. So in the midst of the battleground, it was a very confusing place. There was arrows coming in. There was people running at you. And what they would do is they would raise a banner with the general's name on it. So the, actually the battalion knew where they were. They, if the trumpet went out and it was a rallying cry, they knew where to run. They would run to the banner. And what God says is, my banner is love. That's where you run to. When it gets confusing, when it gets difficult, run to love. And I am love. Often the banners would have the name of the generals on it. So the soldiers knew where to go. But Jesus says it's love. That's the rallying point. You see, in Song of Songs, what it meant for the lady, and this is very important, she knew that the banner over her was love. She lived in a time when women were just treated like property. It wouldn't have been uncommon for husbands to beat wives, just to divorce them at the drop of the hat. She needed to know that she was loved and safe and secure. And when she realised that the banner over her was love, She knew she'd arrive safely. She knew that she was in a good marriage. She knew that she was with a husband she could trust because his banner was love. She knew that she would find love and support and safety. And can I say to you, if you don't know God that well, you will always find love, support and safety when you run to him. Every time you will find that. God accepts us just as we are. He loves us and he wants to start to walk with us, showing us a different way of doing life, a better way. One that as we live it, it causes us less hurt and other people less hurt. Because his banner over us is love. It's not a banner of fear or, or death or destruction or addiction, but it's a banner of love. Now the second meaning of the word banner, if you've been in church a long time, this may make you go red. You may get very embarrassed because it's a little rude, but I can't help it, it's in the Bible. Some people say that the word love there is taken from the Kayan. You have no idea whether I pronounce that word correctly or not, but take my word for it. I have a degree in theology and I make up words in sermons. (laughs) But it means desire and intent. And if you were to take a literal translation of that verse in this language, it would say, not his banner, his intent over me. Oh, sorry, his intent towards me is lovemaking. 
I told you the Song of Songs was a little steamy in places. We've reached one of those steamy parts. But for us, the context is that God's intent to us is to love us. His intent to us is for him to be a place of safety. His intent towards us is to be a place of security. And that's why I love the bit in 1 Corinthians right at the end where it says, love never fails. Can I assure you that God will never fail you? God will never let you down. If we could have the next slide, please. The Christmas story is a story of love. A love that never fails. I think it was Max Licardo that said this, Blessed is the season which engages the whole world in a conspiracy of love. The good news of God being born on the earth means that love changed the course of every silent night. Within the Christmas story, there is tenderness for the past, there's courage for the present, and there is hope for the future. Psalm 23, right at the very end, it says, You prepare a banquet for me, where I'm at, where my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honoured guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be me, the, with me all my life, and your house will be my home for as long as I live. In other words, supper's ready. I forgive you, and I love you. And as we enter Advent, as we take time to reflect on the gift of, of love that God sent in the form of a baby. Maybe it's time to allow God's love afresh into your life. Maybe for the first time. Or maybe you've been walking with God for many, many years. Maybe it's in a deeper and a new way to allow God's to love to come and to change us. So my challenge to you all today is to go on an adventure. That's what I did there with the word advent. This Christmas, go on an adventure with God. Because supper's ready. God says, come and dine with me. Spend time to know him deeper. God says, I forgive you. We've all messed up. We've all got it wrong. It may be that you've come in this morning with shame and guilt. God says, leave it with me. I forgive you. Let's start to restore your life. It may be that you've come in with unforgiveness because somebody has said something or done something and God would say to you, leave it with me. Walk out free. Let's do life together a different way. And God says, I love you. That's the message of Advent. That God loves us and wants to be with us and bring a fullness of life to every single one of us. If we could have the next slide. I think we're on the last one. We've nearly landed. I listened to a podcast called Mid-Faith Crisis. I don't agree with everything on the, on the podcast. I spend half my time, because it's quite funny, I spend half my time laughing at it. The other half of the time, I start to shout and argue with the two presenters. They can't hear me. They're just in my headphones. One of them's called Nick Page. He's an author. You may have read some of his books. And a couple of years ago, they were looking at the good news, and he wrote this. And with this, I finish. When he summarized the good news, he said this, There is a God, and God is good. And God loves you. Because God is good and because God loves you, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to suffer alone. You don't have to worry about riches or status or pretending to be someone you're not. You don't have to feel insignificant, unnoticed or unloved. You don't have to be trapped in guilt or shame. You don't have to be scared of death because death is not the end. You don't have to walk through this world alone. The world is beautiful and the world is terrible. No one knows why, but we do know that it's not God how God wants it to be and that we can change it a little by changing ourselves. That's why God invites us to a different life, a life of freedom, kindness, hope, courage, honesty and forgiveness. We can live this life by copying Jesus, who shows us what God is like, and by asking God's Spirit to work in us because we can't do it on our own. So here's the thing. You're not your wounds. You're not your fears or your failures. You're not your possessions or your career. You are not what has been done to you or what you have done to others. You are not what others say about you or even what you say about yourselves. You are a child of God. For there is a God, 
a God who is good and a God who loves you. So my few well-chosen words for you today are very simple. Supper's ready. God both forgives you and loves you in equal measure. He's invited you to his banquet and all you have to do to is accept his invitation. And my friends, that's what Advent is all about. So can I challenge you? Can I encourage you to start an adventure? Because supper's ready. Will you join the banquet? Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can hear everyone now, which is more important, or just as important. Okay, that was a fantastic message, wasn't it? It really, really was. I'm going to continue with a couple of worship songs now. So again, if you're able to, do please stand and worship the Lord. Was it 
Creation, I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. mention of your name fear we wonder us to wonder at the mention of your name use the name of all names wonder fear we wonder us to wonder at the mention of your name is it like it Fill with wonder, fill with wonder, all struck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, strength for living water, such a marvelous mystery. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. is the name above all names. There's none greater or mightier than you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you are awesome. You are our rock. You are our cornerstone. And Lord, we can stand firm in the knowledge that, yeah, you are unshakable. You have welcomed us in, Lord. You have welcomed us in, Lord, and you give us the love. You give us the strength and the peace, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Jesus. blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but only trust in Jesus name Christ alone cornerstone Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of When 
darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds in me. stand before the throne. Thank you, Jesus. Christ alone. Christ alone. Christ alone. Just voices. Weak, made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord. Lord of all, yes, Lord, beautiful church. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Sing it to the Lord this morning. Christ alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of Christ alone.
God, you are awesome. Lord, we just thank you that we can stand in your presence and we can worship with brothers and sisters, just lifting up our voices, our instruments, our time, our talent to you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing. We just pray a blessing upon us all, Lord. Use us, fill us up with your spirit, Lord, and send us out into workplaces, into our, fa- into our family, with our friends. But just uh, all we want to be doing, Lord, is just working for you. Lord, thank you, God, for all that you're doing. And we just, uh, yeah, give you all the, th- all the praise and the glory, and we pray a blessing upon everyone here in the name of Jesus. Amen.